Am I the a-hole for leaving before my sister's wedding ceremony started and leaving someone else in charge of my responsibility? My female sister got married on Friday. She and I are twins, so we are very close and best friends. She is child-free while I have two kids, three male and one male. Obviously, she loves her nephews. She never mistreated them, but she is not a person who would accept being a babysitter for a day. She has never offered to help with anything, though it's her choice that I respect it. Not surprisingly, her marriage was child-free even for the family. She asked me to be her maid of honor, and I accepted. I was responsible for a few things at a ceremony and party. Nothing complex, but I asked another bridesmaid for help, so she was also on top of everything. My children stayed with my in-laws while my husband and I went to the wedding. About 10 minutes before everything started, I was there for two hours. My in-laws called saying that my youngest hit his head while playing with my oldest and that they were taking him to the hospital. I despaired. Even though they said it was conscious, my heart was not at peace, nor my husband's. So we decided to go to the hospital. I talked to the bridesmaid and explained everything I had to do. She accepted and when it was time to talk to my sister, she had a meltdown saying that I couldn't go at the most important moment in her life and asked if I was choosing him instead of her. I got really irritated and said, yes, I choose my son in the hospital. I left with her cursing me. My son is fine but he got two stitches without any internal trauma after they did exams. But we only left the hospital the other day because they preferred to put him under observation because he's very young. I preferred to stay away from my cell phone just like my husband. And when I got home, got several calls from different people. And I answered when I saw my sisters. She asked before how my son was. And when she learned that it was a minor injury, she started screaming saying that I abandoned her at the most important moment in her life. That she was without a family in her own marriage. No parents and grandparents that I left my responsibilities to a person who did everything wrong and caused an embarrassment. And to make matters worse, I didn't even want to show up since my husband could stay in the hospital while I would at least share this moment with her. She called me several names until my husband took the cell phone out of my hand and told her to get lost. I really could have at least gone to the party, but I wasn't going to make it knowing my baby's in the hospital. I can't help but feel bad for my sister. Am I the a -hole? Now for the top comments. This is one of those inevitable hurt feelings that aren't really anyone's fault situations. You had no choice but to go to your son's side as a head trauma can be really scary, especially when it's a child. Your sister is entitled to her hurt feelings about not having family on her wedding day, but she's overreacting and taking it out on you when you couldn't help it. Not stay home and you're right. Your son's health and wellness are more important than your sister's feelings. Hard disagree. This is 100% the bridezilla's fault. I can't fathom how anyone with the slightest bit of compassion would fault a parent for wanting to see that their child is safe after a potentially serious accident. Not day home. She started screaming saying that I abandoned her. She'd rather have you leave your child abandoned to stay with this grown woman? She's the a hole. To quote my boss literally three hours ago, if your family had a problem and you weren't distracted by it, I'd think less of you. This was part of him saying that he'd rather we just tell him if we have a problem than try to internalize it or go to someone else in the team because if he doesn't know, he can't give us any support. This. Also, I guess I'm the only person who doesn't see stitches and a concussion as a minor injury. I mean, it could have been life-threatening. Not the a-hole. Your sister needs to chill. Yes, it ended up being a minor injury but it could have been worse. Always better to be safe than sorry. She sounds a bit like a bridezilla. Her first concern, earlier in the post when you left the wedding, was that you'd abandoned her and not whether your child was okay. I get that her day is important, but she's showing you where her priorities lie. Minor injuries do not require stitches. Nor do they require being kept at a hospital for observation. Minor in the sister's eyes. Next story. Am I the a-hole for saying I won't cuddle my infertile sister anymore? My sister Julie has tried to have a baby for five years. She had a miscarriage two years ago and outside that has been unable to get pregnant. My heart hurts for her. However, one thing I don't agree with is how my family has handled it. We're not allowed to talk about babies around Julie. Any kids younger than three can't come to family events that she'll attend. She won't attend baby showers, baptisms, etc. The last one I understand, but the rest feels overkill. I got pregnant last year. I told Julie first and she reiterated her boundaries. I said I understood. 
The first hurdle came with my baby shower. My mother-in-law was throwing it, and I didn't expect Julie to come. But then my mom told me I shouldn't have one, period, out of respect. I said that was ridiculous. She didn't have to come, so what did it matter? Only three people from my side of the family came to the shower. When my son was born, I posted a birth announcement on Facebook, and my parents lectured me for this, and said it was going to hurt Julie. I said she could just block or mute me. They said I should make the effort. Julie echoed that if I cared, I'd stop. I ended up blocking her just to save drama. My aunt's 70th birthday party is next week. My husband and I plan to go, bringing our son. Julie called and asked if we were going. She then asked for me to get a sitter for our son. I said no. She doesn't want to miss the party, but my aunt is one of the few people who agree that Julie's boundaries aren't fair and wants my son there as she doesn't get to see him often. Julie got upset and started crying saying that I was unfair. I finally snapped and asked what would happen when she got pregnant. Would we all be expected to shower her with the love and attention she's refused to give other people's kids? Will her baby be allowed to attend events? She said that was different. I said no, I'm not cuddling her anymore. My son exists, his family, and he's coming. She can decide if she wants to or not. My parents yelled at me for being mean to Julie. They offered to pay for a sitter, but I said no. It's not even her house. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your sister is taking this way too far. Your point about her possible child is totally valid. I doubt she's doing this with friends and co-workers. She does it with friends, but she doesn't have many to begin with. They also don't have kids, so it's easier. I'm sure about work. Gee, wonder why she doesn't have many friends. Yep, I have a toddler and one on the way. And if I made her acquaintance and she said she couldn't deal with kids? I wouldn't bother to know her any further. I won't pretend my kids don't exist until they are older just to not trigger her. I say all this as someone who had a full-term stillbirth from a cord knot after years of trying to have a child. I couldn't deal with seeing babies and young children for a while. I let my Facebook friends know that I was staying friends with them, but for my friends who had young kids or babies, I was temporarily unfollowing until I was in a healthier place mentally. I shopped early in the day at the grocery when many parents didn't take their kids out, but my husband and I stayed home a lot. I dealt with our infertility and got therapy after our loss. It was hard seeing new babies for a while, but gradually, seeing a little one would make me smile a little rather than want to cry. And when my rainbow baby was born, I felt like I could smile again without feeling guilt for being happy. The sister desperately needs some counseling and mental health help. I sympathize with her. I really do. Babies made me sad for a long time, but you can't punish others for something like having children. Not today, Hull. Good lord. Wow. She's trying to cut off all family events-related contact for your side of the family? She needs therapy badly. That's just so unfair to you and your child and the other relatives who do want to see the baby. Tell your parents that if they want to see their grandson, they need to start treating him like a human being and part of the family, not a weapon pointed at your sister. Not today, Hall. You made some very good points to your sister and I am not surprised with what she said. Sunshine and rainbows if she has a kid, but for anyone else, your kids can't come or aren't allowed because it will upset me. It's total BS and your parents are encouraging it. My wife and I had two miscarriages. Of course it's bad, but we had to move on. Your sister just doesn't want to. Yes, she needs therapy badly. It's as if her identity has now been wrapped up in her childlessness, as if she uses her family's pity and empathy to gain special attention. This is way, way beyond normal or healthy. Her parents are furthering the problem by continuing to indulge this woe-is-me situation and have literally made Julie's infertility more a part of their lives than their own living grandchild. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she should have thought before having kids if she wanted more freedom? My friend Isla, 26 female, and I, 26 female, have known each other since middle school. We applied to the same college and got in. However, Isla got pregnant after a few months and decided to drop out. She's had three more accidental pregnancies and is now a stay-at-home mother of four. I was telling her the other day that I'm going to travel to Europe, and if all goes well, I will be moving there. She got really annoyed with me and told me that it must be nice to have all the freedom and no responsibilities because I don't have kids. Like, hello, I work, I'm doing my PhD. It's not like I'm just sitting on my butt. This is not the first time she took jabs at me for that, 
but it was the first time she was this rude. I told her that if she wanted to be free and go off whenever and wherever she wanted, she should have used protection and thought before having kids. Our conversation was at my house and her kids weren't there. She got really mad and left, slamming the door on her way out. She hasn't replied to my messages, but she started telling everyone what an awful person I am. Am I the a-hole for snapping at her? Now for the top comments. Four accidental pregnancies? At some point, that's not an accident. That's choosing to let pregnancies happen. I think you've just grown too far apart. She's jealous, but that's on her. She chose her life, and you chose yours. Four kids didn't just happen to her without her input. Not today, Hall, and maybe it's best if you let the friendship fizzle out. Once is accidental. Twice is coincidence. Thrice is enemy action. Four is, I don't know, alcoholism, probably. Not today, Hall. Yes, I think it's time to end that friendship chapter. My best friend from childhood has her PhD and also travels a lot and lives abroad. I chose to marry my husband with my two stepkids I help raise with primary custody and our toddler. I'm happy for her, not jealous. I chose my path and while it's not always easy and can be very thankless, I enjoy my husband and kids, most days. She should enjoy travel while she's young instead of older and she has worked hard for it. I'm sure four kids are tough. My three can make me feel like I'm losing it on a daily basis. But it was a choice, accidental or not. There was the risk by having intimacy and keeping the babies, as heartless as that sounds. Maybe she didn't know how demanding and draining it could be. Heck, I didn't. But she should celebrate her friend. A friend has different struggles, and she truly has worked herself off to get her PhD, which I doubt I could do. Not stay holopi. Everyone has a breaking point, and she was being rude for too long. Not today, Hall. I'm sorry, but there is no such thing as four accidental pregnancies. Unless she is one of the most fertile people on the planet. One, sure. Get on long-term birth control, etc. afterwards and also use rubbers. But four? I'm sorry, no. Her having four kids to be responsible for is not your burden to carry. If she is resentful for her life, that's on her, not you. Good for you for sticking up for yourself. If she's going to be a witch because you don't have children, then maybe it's time to let this friendship fade. Thank you. I'm shocked though you haven't received replies from people telling you they had an IUD, were taking the pill and used a rubber and still got pregnant. Like, no girl, you didn't. I do know someone who's hyper-fertile. She got her tubes tied. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for picking the same name for my baby as my brother-in-law's unborn baby? My 31 female husband, 33 male, and his brother, 36 male, aren't super close, but we all get along well. My brother-in-law is pretty nice overall, but he does seem to be a bit jealous of my husband and just everything we have. But my husband told me that it's always been like this, so it's not really a big deal. I'm currently pregnant with a baby girl, our first baby, and we've been discussing possible names. There's one that we're pretty sure of. It's not super out there, but I think pretty unique nowadays, and I really like it. The issue is, this is the name that brother-in-law and his girlfriend had picked out for their baby three years ago. If it was a girl because they didn't know yet, but the baby unfortunately died. His girlfriend chose the name for her favorite ballet, and I remember she would say that if she ever had a daughter, she'd name her that. We were at a family event over the weekend, and I mentioned that we had the name in mind. Brother-in-law looked kind of surprised and said that was the name they'd picked for their daughter. My husband said that we know, but we just thought it was a really nice name. Brother-in-law started saying if we could reconsider and that there are other names, and this one's really special to him. I said that we decided on the name, and he actually didn't even know if his baby was going to be a girl or a boy. He was upset and kept saying that we should reconsider. I got a little mad and told him that he doesn't own the name, and they should be hoping for a healthy baby rather than worry about names. Brother-in-law dropped it after that, but my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, told me and my husband that we don't care and we're intentionally hurting him. You're the a-hole. No, they don't own the name. That doesn't mean they're wrong that you should reconsider when you've clearly known for years that it's special to them. Especially when the mere fact you're having this argument shoots a gaping hole in your pretty unique reason for picking it, and you don't seem to have anything specially meaningful to counter that with. Okay, maybe I should have been clearer in my post. Sometimes when me and brother-in-law's girlfriend would chat, we'd just randomly go on the topic of wedding planning, baby names, etc. 
She mentioned that there's this name she likes, and if she ever had a daughter, she'd probably name her that. She had one for a son too. In fact, we didn't even know she was pregnant until after she died. I'm sorry, are you saying your brother's girlfriend died while pregnant? Edit, confirmed by the OP. So not only is she stealing the name of a dead baby, she's stealing it from a dead woman. Well, that obviously makes it okay then. Yikes on a bike. Also, this made me wince. I got a little mad and told him that he doesn't own the name and they should be hoping for a healthy baby rather than worry about names. But the most insensitive thing she could have chosen to say and I don't think for a second she didn't know how this sounds. Opie, take your own advice. Given that you know someone whose baby died, which would have been your husband's and so your niece or nephew, put your brain back in your skull and engage it. I thought the same thing. The subtext is so mean, like, make sure this one doesn't die like your last one. Oh yes, there's a heck of a lot of subtext here. Well, the baby died so I get dibs on the name now since you don't have a living baby and I do. So maybe if you are lucky someday you can be like me and have a baby that lives. Too bad for you. Better luck next time. Very mean girls type of vibe. Maybe this is the kind of person who would steal someone else's boyfriend and then be like, well, if you were more like me, you'd be able to keep your man. How about you work on you? Instead of being mad at me and maybe next time you'll have a chance. Ta-ta! Info. Are you going to accept your DA hole or were you just hoping for validation because you're going to do it anyways? Because you'd be a massive a-hole if you used the name. Edit. Oh dear lord. Turns out the girlfriend died with a baby too. Oh my god, this is so much worse than I originally thought. The word vile doesn't even begin to describe it. Shame on you. I literally need to take a breather because I am so disgusted on your brother-in-law's behalf. Shame on you. Frankly, it's concerning that someone with that level of apathy is going to be a mother. That poor child. To have a mother like this. It's worse than that. The kid has a father like this too. Not just this mother, but a father who is happy to name his kid the name of his brother's deceased baby.